What's up, everybody? It's Reverend Leon Parker, lead pastor of St. Luke CME Church. As a community-based church, we are dedicated to exploring opportunities that will enhance the standard of living and save souls for the kingdom of God. Here at St. Luke, we are committed to impacting lives by building an essential church through relevant ministries that touches lives, meets needs, and glorifies God. We invite you to join our worship experience every Sunday at 10 a.m. as we embrace God's word and God's people. To learn more about our community, we encourage you to visit our website at www.saintroof.cme.org. God bless you, we love you, and there's nothing you can do about it. Come on, praise the Lord, praise the Lord, church, for this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. God bless you. Thank you for streaming with us live at St. Luke CME Church. This is the day that the Lord has made. Come on, praise team, and bless us this morning as we grow deeper in God and in worship this morning. Praise the Lord, everybody. Our hymn today is just a closer walk with thee. If you have your hymnals with you at the home, it's page 356. You can look it up on the internet. You can look it up on YouTube. But if you're a real Christian, you know it because you've been singing this song all your life. I don't care if you grew up Baptist, Presbyterian, CME, AME, or Koji. This is a song that everybody should know. Ain't that right? Come on, put your hands together and help us sing this song. Let's do the first verse, Jimmy Swagger style. Come on, everybody, just a closer walk. Just a closer walk with me. Granted, Jesus. Let it be, let it be, dear Lord, let it be. First verse, I am weak, but thou art strong. I am weak, but thou art strong. Jesus, keep me from all wrong. Be satisfied as long. As I walk, let me walk, let me walk close to thee. Okay, the second verse, and then we're done. Through this world. If I falter, who with me my burden shares? Who with me None but thee, none but thee, dear friend. from the top just a closer walk just a closer walk with me granted Jesus granted Jesus if you please daily walking close with me
How many people know God is great and greatly to be praised? Come on, from the top. From the top, the greatness of the Lord. The greatness of the Lord is inconceivable. The love. The love that he shows is unconditional. The power of the Lord. Thank you. 
tonight. Give him a great praise. Come on, if it had not been for the Lord who was on your side. for your gift and contribution to St. Luke CME Church and partnering with us to church through relevant ministries that touch lives, meet needs, and glorifies God. Your gifts enable us to focus on education, community development, legacy giving, and creating God's kingdom for all people and all generations. There are five ways to give to St. Luke. Please go to stlukecme.org and click the giving tab or text the word GIVE to 615-334-5900. You can also bring your contributions to the church office during normal business hours or mail your contribution to St. Luke CME Church, 2008 Ed Temple Boulevard, Nashville, Tennessee, 37208. We invite you to download the EasyTide app available for all smart devices in your application store. Thank you for giving to St. Luke CME Church as we embrace God's word and God's people and we declare a blessing over your gift. Truly, if you give, it shall be given unto you, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. Gather for my good and I know that all things work together. We just finished thinking about how good God is. He's great and greatly to be praised. We want to stay in that same vein. Lord, I'm amazed by you and all of the things you do and all the power in your name. The heavens declare your glory, the angels they bow before thee, let all creations shout and proclaim, you are the great. You are the great and mighty God. You are the great. You are the great and mighty God. You are, you are the great. You are the great mighty God you are the grace yes you are you are the great and mighty you are the great you are the great you are the great you are the great and mighty God you are the great you are the You are the great. 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 And mighty God. You are the great. You are the great. There's no one above you, no one beside you. You are the great. You Stay right there. Stay right there. being great in my life. You are the great. You are the great and mighty God. You are the great. You are the great. Oh, you are the great. You are the great and mighty God. You are the great. You are the great. You are the great. You are the great. 
Worship God. How great, how great is our God. Sing with me, sing with me. How great is our God. Oh, we'll see how great, how great is our 
great is our God? How great is our God? Come on, let's celebrate God. If he's worthy to be praised, let's give God some praise. If God is good, why don't you like, show some love. Comment in the section below, give God some praise. Boy, he's worthy to be praised from the rising of the sun to the going down of the same. Amen. We're so grateful to be here with you live virtually this morning from St. Luke CME Church. There's a word for you this morning, and if you have your Bibles, we ask that you would join us, join us uh, to the 2 Samuel chapter 6, verse 11. That's 2 Samuel chapter 6, verse 11. Amen. The word of God reads this morning that the ark of the Lord remained there in Obed-Edom's house for three months, and the Lord blessed Obed-Edom and his entire household. Let us pray. God, we thank you for this day, another opportunity to be in your house virtually. We ask, Lord God, that as we continue, Lord God, in this life, that you would bless our going and our coming. We ask, Lord God, that you would touch this country, Lord God, as we go to and fro and as the country begins to open. Lord God, we pray a special prayer of protection. We know that you are in control of it all. And so as we learn today in this message that we are blessed, we ask that you would help us as we continue with the vision, the faith, and the courage to do your will. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. Brothers and sisters, we've been hearing a lot of stuff on the news lately. And one of the things that I fail to hear unless I go on to someone's virtual service is the petition for God to bless my house. So if there are a few of you this morning that's looking for a blessing, looking for a healing, looking for deliverance, I dare you to say on today, Lord, bless my house. That's right. And if you can't say it, why don't you type it in the comment section, type it, uh, uh, share it, whatever you got to do to express that you want God to bless your house. I don't know about you, but it's been a long time. It's been about five or six weeks that we've been in the house. We've been cooped up. We've been closed in and shut out. The temperature is rising, as a songwriter would say. The administration, corporations, and governors have foolishly determined yeah. that profits over people yeah. is a priority as states like Georgia and the state of Tennessee began to open its doors and its streets. While in concert, brothers and sisters, pastors such as myself and others believe in science, but we also believe in God. And we have vowed for the protection of viewers like you to keep the doors of the sanctuary, the physical building of God's house, closed, but to keep the virtual church open to all who is willing to share and to be blessed while encouraging you to do your part by flattening the curve of the coronavirus by keeping your behind in the house. So the past seven weeks we have shared in this series as you continue to stay in the house we realize that First, there is no place like home, and then we learn about what happens when Jesus is in your home. Following that, the question was raised in our series, what do you have in the house? And then on last week, Pastor Nathalie reminded us that there are impractical blessings in the house. And so on this morning, I want you to know, as we enter into part seven of this series, considering all that is happening right now, God still can bless you. God still knows the address to your home. God still can answer your prayer. Y'all don't hear me this morning. God can still do things that your mind couldn't even fathom. And I wish I just had a few people in God's house 
across watching with us virtually that could give some kind of recognition that God is still in the blessing business. And if you believe that God is still in the blessing business, I dare you to say, Lord, bless my house. If nothing else, 2 Samuel 6 bears out the blessings and the benefits having God's authentic presence in your house. Now, as we back up, I want to bring your attention to 2 Samuel chapter 6, verses 1 and 2, so that we can put it in context. The word of God reads, David again assembled all of the best soldiers in Israel, about 30,000 men. He and all the people with him left Bala and in Judah to bring God's ark to Jerusalem. The ark is called by the name of the Lord of armies who is enthroned over the angels. Listen, for over 100 years, we find that the Ark of the Covenant had been separated from the tabernacle and other places of worship. And as the newly appointed king, David's goal was to schedule and to subdue his enemies with the help of the Lord. You ought to pause right there because some of us, we try to operate and do things without the Lord, realizing that when we operate and when we work without the Lord, nine times out of ten, it doesn't work out how we thought it would. But the word of God says that David had permission from the Lord. David had help from the Lord, which was the task of taking over a nation. Come on, somebody. And in order to protect the people and in order to un unify the kingdom, he had to get the Ark of the Covenant into his possessions, which was seized by the Philistines at its new current home. And so when we look at the Ark of the Covenant, it was Israel's national treasure. The Ark of the Covenant was the most instrumental symbol. It was holy historical artifacts that contained the Ten Commandments or what was called the Mosaic Law. The Ark of the Covenant contained a pot of manna and it also contained on the inside the rod of Aaron, symbolizing God's earthly dwelling, symbolizing God's presence, God's holiness and relationship with his holy people. And so as led by God, we find King David who had taken the land of Jerusalem and then calling it the city of David. He found that this land would be a neutral place and he made it the political capital of the kingdom. The only thing that remained was to retrieve the ark of the covenant, to place it in the tabernacle where he would erect uh, Mount Zion and declare that Jerusalem was the religious center of the nation. Now, I don't want to bore y'all, but I needed to give you some background to understand how your house can end up blessed. Well, historical data would show us that there was a process that got this city, this uh, a family to be blessed. But if you look at the word of God, God was positioning David so that there could be a blessing not just in his home, but in the homes of those who believed, in the home of those who were under his leadership. David understood by having the presence of God in his life all things were possible. And so in our current crisis, I want you to know that even in times of war, in times of pestilence, in times of uncertainty, God can still position you for blessings. The question that is raised is, are you following his instructions in this time of positioning? Are you redefining and rediscovering your gifts and your talents? Preacher, are you spending more time in God's word? Musicians, choristers, are you positioning yourselves in fasting and in praying and rendering your gifts of song and music at a greater level? Writer, are you writing the book that God 
God has placed in your heart. Teacher, are you teaching? Are you going back and getting the education and the certifications that God is calling you to while we're in this season of staying in the house? I don't know about you, but it is clear that in our circumstance, God has a way to position and to bless you without you even know it. Come on, somebody. Writer, are you writing? Are you writing that business plan? One of you out there today is trying to open up a, a business. Are you writing the business plan? Are you praying? Are you teaching your children? Come on, somebody. In your house about God and his son, Jesus Christ. What are you doing to allow God to position you in order to be blessed? The word of God reads in 2 Samuel, chapter 6, verse 3 through 5, and they carried the ark of God on a new cart and brought it out of the house of Abinadab, which was on the hill, and Uzzah and Ahio, the sons of Abinadab, were driving the new cart with the ark of God. And Ahio went before the ark. Verse 6 through 7 says, But when they came to Nation's threshing floor, the ox stumbled, so Uzzah reached out for the ark, and God grabbed it. And the Lord, he got angry with Uzzah, so God killed him there for his lack of respect. He died beside the ark. Wait a minute. God killed him? Did I just say that? Yeah, I heard it. No, no, I didn't say it. The Bible said that God killed him. You mean to tell me that, that this brother was doing good in the midst of doing good, he was then killed? But when you look at the text as defined by Alvin Platinga, the Odyssey is something that we wrestle with. The answer to the question of why God permits evil things to happen. Theodicy is defined as a theological construct that attempts to vindicate God in response to the evidential problem of evil that seems inconsistent with existence of an omnipresent and omnibelevant God. Come on, somebody. We see here in the text and on many occasions situations like this all the time. What do you mean? How bad things can sometimes happen to good people? Today, in the words of 45, and, and it wasn't funny when he said it, but I had to quote him. He said, people are dying that never died before. But the reality is that some were bad people and some were good people. Uh, good people die and bad people die, which calls upon the question of theodicy denoting the problem of suffering experienced in a world that is construed and divinely conditioned. What in the world are you talking about? Here it is. This brother was doing good for the kingdom of God. Azuk. And his brother was carrying the Ark of the Covenant over the threshing floor. And as a result, the ox caused the Ark to shake, prompting Uzzah to touch the Ark, which in Jewish tradition was a no-no. You were not to touch the Ark of the Covenant unless you were a part of the Levite tribe. And so in other words, let me say this, what God hates the most often lives inside what he loves the most. Hear me when I say this. The story of David's new cart and its results is a striking illustration of the spiritual truth that blessings does not follow even the best intentions in the service of God except as that service is rendered only in the way that God wants it to be rendered. It's a constant point of failure, brothers and sisters, because God has given us explicit directions how the ark should be handled. God gives us explicit direction how he wants us to worship him in spirit and in truth. 
God gives us explicit directions in the gifts that he blesses us with that every now and again he wants us to give back just a portion. God gives us the prescription and the instructions to worship and to do what he has called us to do in season and out of season. But the big point that I want to bring to your attention is that Uzzah, he touched the ark of God and he died touched the ark, and he died. And so here it is. In his good intentions, right, so was God's anger. Just because you are called upon by man to serve in the kingdom does not mean that you are uh, in the position or that the position you serve fits what God has for you. Let me say that again. Just because you are called upon by man to serve in the kingdom of God does not mean that the position you are called upon fits what's best for you in the eyes of God. And at the end of the day, that's what matters. And that's why I would submit to you that we cannot play with God. We don't have time to play with God. Here it is. Let me tell you this. Everybody can't handle God's holiness. Everybody can't handle God's holiness. Just like King David, we felt the pain of the untimely deaths of those who died in 2020. I mean, 2020 has hit us hard. We began the year with the loss of Kobe. Then there was the March tornadoes of those who lost their lives. And now here in Nashville, we're dealing, and in the United States of America, with the pandemic that has killed over 67,000 people in the United States alone. And I don't know about you, but if 2020 was a car, I think it would look like this. People, people are perplexed at the thousands of lives lost this year alone. And many of us, like David, are afraid. But at the same time, I want to ensure you that God is still in control. I said God is still in control. I know it's hard for many of us to wrestle with, but that is the truth. God is still in control. God is in control when we do understand. God is in control when we don't understand. God is in control when we feel that it's fair, and God is still in control when we know it is unfair. The Word of God says, 2 Samuel verse 9 and 10, that David was afraid of the Lord that day. He said, how can the ark of the Lord come into my city, he asked. So David wouldn't bring the ark of the Lord with him to the city of David. Instead, he rerouted it to the home of Obed-Edom, who was from another town. David made up in his mind that if he was going to bring the Ark of the Covenant in, he was going to do it right. And until he figured out how to do it right and how God wanted him to do it, he was going to put it in Obed-Edom's house. And so here it is. Verse 11 says that the Ark of the Lord stayed at Obed-Edom's house for three months. And the Lord blessed Obed-Edom and his whole family. The text is clear, brothers and sisters. With God's presence came the blessings. Y'all don't hear me this morning. The most uh, 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 common Hebrew term for the word presence is panim, which is translated into the word face, implying that a close and impersonal encounter with God is always in order, especially when you want to receive some blessings. And I don't know about you, but in all that I'm experiencing right now, there's nothing like making room for God to be in the presence and even in the midst of your house. There's nothing like making time in the midst of all that we are going with with and all that we are going through to make time for God to have a personal encounter with the Lord. Y'all, I'm getting ready to go, but listen, the text says that two things happen as a result of God's presence in the house. The text says first 
that Obed-Edom experienced a personal blessing from God. He experienced a personal blessing. I don't know who this is for, but you have been uh, 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 looking for a blessing for a long time. You've been helping and you've been serving others as long as you can remember. You going to the grocery store and picking up medication for those persons who can't go out the house. But I want you to know this morning that God is saying that in this season of recluse, in this season of retreat, in this season of quietness, in this season of quarantine, it's time for God to bless you. Come on, somebody. It's time for God to bless you for all the things that you've been asking for. It's time for God to heal you for what you've been asking for in areas of healing. It's time for you to receive your personal blessings yeah. from God. And so as I walk into the second quarter of 2020, I'm singing this song in my head. I want God to bless me me personally. I want, I'm praying the prayer of Jabez. I want God to enlarge my territory. I want God to bless me indeed. I want God to touch me, to bless my finances, to give me a new attitude, to make my relationship. I want God to bless me yeah. personally. But the text says not only was he blessed personally, his family got blessed corporately. Let me prove it. Verse 11 says that the ark of the Lord stayed at home with Obed-Edom for three months, say 90 days. 90 days. And the Lord blessed Obed-Edom and his whole family. Verse 11 from the New Living Translation says that the ark of the Lord remained there for three months, say 90 days. 90 days. And the Lord blessed Obed-Edom and his entire household. In 2020, not only do I want God to bless me personally, but I want God to bless my wife. I want God to bless my son. I want God to bless my mother-in-law. I want God to bless my family. Is there anybody watching this stream this morning that's looking for a blessing, not just for you, but for your family? The Word of God says that he'll bless you when you're in his presence. And so in 2020, in this second quarter, I want God to bless my house in its entirety. I want God to bless the cat. I want God to bless the dog. I want God to bless the rodents that ain't got no business in my house anyways. I want to walk through my bathroom and say, Lord, bless this room. Bless that room. Bless this room. So when I think about the goodness and all that he's done for me, my soul will cry out because he's been good to me. The Bible says that the ark was there for three months. You ought to say 90 days. I'm telling you, you ought to say 90 days. Some of us have been sheltering in place for over 90 days. And God has been doing some big things. And just because I can, I'm going to ask God right now to bless everything and everyone in your house. I want God to bless that nephew of yours that's been sleeping on your couch for years. Maybe God will bless him and give him a job. I want God to bless your health. You've been sick long enough. I want God to bless your relationship. Y'all been fighting long enough. I want God to bless your money and your finances because he's able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all that you can ask a thing. You ought to give God a 90-day praise because when God moves, word of God says in verse 12 that King David was told, that the Lord blessed Obed-Edom's household and everything he has because of the ark of God. So David went there and brought the ark from the house of Obed-Edom to the city of David with great celebration. See, some of y'all can't get blessed because you don't know how to praise the Lord. Proverbs 10 and 22 says, the blessing of the Lord makes one rich and he adds no sorrow with it. When you know God has been good to you, you don't have time for a pity party. When you know God has been good to you, you don't have time for an attitude. The word of God says in Deuteronomy 28, two through four, and all these blessings shall come upon you 
come and overtake you because you obey the voice of the Lord your God. Blessed shall you be in the city. Blessed shall you be in the field. Blessed shall you be in the fruit of your body. I'm preaching here. 2 Samuel 6 and 11 says that the ark of the Lord stayed in Obed-Edom's house for how long? 90 days. And the Lord blessed Obed-Edom and his whole family. One thing I love about God's blessings is that God's blessings will brag without your permission. Let me say that again. God's blessings will brag without your permission. In other words, God may bless you, and folk on your job may be looking at you crazy like, well, what's wrong with her? We in the midst of this pandemic. She just a smiling and looking good. Well, one thing I figured out, when God blesses you, no man can mess with you. So hold your head up, stick your chest out, and walk with the favor of God over you. I don't know what condition Obed-Edom's house was in before the presence of God entered, but what I do believe is that God's presence brought about a shift in the atmosphere. Somebody said that his money got better. Somebody said that his relationship got better. Somebody said that he and his wife stopped arguing as much. Somebody said that his kids started to get straight A's. Somebody said that his high blood pressure went down. Somebody said that his sugar was regulated. Couldn't buy y'all, but I got to tell you this. In verse 13, it says, After the men who were carrying the ark of the Lord had gone six steps, David sacrificed a bull and a fatted cow. Couldn't you imagine that every six steps, one, two, three, four, five, six, that was an offering unto God. Every time they moved, one, two, three, four, five, six, there was an offering unto the Lord. Listen, when God blesses you, you ought to give him praise everywhere you go. You ought to shout unto God at all times. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. Now let me tell you this. The text says, after six steps, they stopped and worshiped God. As if the average man's foot was about 10 to 12 inches. In other words, they were six feet apart from each other. They were social distancing. I don't know about you, but in this season of social distancing, God has been so good to me. So while I have my six feet, I'm gonna give God some praise. While I have six feet. I'm going to celebrate that God is good. Six feet, no pressure, because God is good. Six feet, no pressure, because God is blessing me. Six feet, no pressure, because God is healing me. God is delivering me. God is setting me free. I got to go, I got to go, but the word says in verse 14, and David danced before the Lord with all his might. Let me say that again. David danced before the Lord with all his might, wearing his priestly garment. So David and all the other people of Israel brought the ark, and they started shouting unto God because they heard about what God had did in Obed-Edom's house. They heard what God had did in, to his family. They heard what God had did in the community. And I don't know about you, but I'm glad that when God enters into my life, when God enters into my life, I'm just like David. It feels like fire shut up in my bones. It feels like fire shut up in my bones. And I don't know about you, but when I think of the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done to me, my soul cries out. I had about five people who could stand up and give God some praise. I wish I had about five people who could like, who could show some love that God is able to do exceedingly and abundantly of the Lord.
If y'all gonna give God some praise, come on with it. If y'all gonna give God some praise, come on with it. team comes, we extend the invitation to discipleship. You've been out of the house long enough. God is saying it's time to come home. There's blessings here. There's healing here. There's deliverings right here in the house. And so if you are searching for a church home, we extend the invitation for you to text the phone number on the screen looking for prayer, text us. If you're looking for a church home, text us. If you're looking to accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, we invite you to text us at this time. Our ministerial staff is standing by, willing to pray for you and to assist you in any way that we can. As the praise team comes forward at this time, amen, we ask that you would Hold on and let them bless you as we prepare our hearts and minds on this first Sunday for Holy Communion. Amen. Come on, team. Bless us. Amen. As they come, we ask that you would prepare your bread, your wine, your crackers, your juice as we prepare ourselves for Holy Communion. In this place. Thank you. 
praise team, music ministry. Y'all all right with me? You all right with us too, Pastor? Well, bless your bones. We love you. I love y'all too. Just don't come to my house. <laughs> Amen. Let us take the bread. This bread has great meaning, symbolism, which represents the body of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who on the night that he was betrayed, took it and gave it to his disciples. After knowing that he was going to be beaten and bruised and battered and talked about and spit on, he said, disciples, take this, do this in remembrance of me. And so he took the bread and he ate it. Will you eat with me? Then after dinner, he took a cup of wine and said, Beloved brothers, this, this cup represents the blood that was shed for you and for many. When you drink this cup, do this also in remembrance of me. And so he took the cup. And so in our tradition, we culminate this moment by reciting the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples. The Lord's Prayer. Will you join me? Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us of our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from all evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Will you celebrate by singing one of the great hymns of the church with me? Come on, saints.
never lose its power. I want you to know that whatever you're going through, the blood will never lose its power. Oh, never lose its power. I don't care if you're in a doctor room, the blood will God would keep you and that God's loving face would shine down upon you. It is my prayer that you would join us this Wednesday and each and every Sunday for an empowering word here at St. Luke CME Church. Go now in peace and may the peace of God go with you. We love you. Take care. Thank you.